Henry VIII was furious. He thought his advisors had deceived him. The princess looked very different in the portrait than she did in person. The arrival of the German princess in December 1539 made a lot of noise at the English court. His fourth wife, Anne of Cleves, had failed to live up to the king's expectations. But was she really that ugly? The artist Holbein decided to paint Anne of Cleves in full face, which was unusual. Perhaps it was the most flattering angle for Anne of Cleves. Henry VIII accused Holbein and diplomats of trying to persuade him to marry Anne with an implausible portrait. The king's marriage to a Protestant woman was very favorable to Thomas Cromwell, so it can be assumed that it was he who insisted on Anne of Cleves as the royal bride. Thomas Cromwell told the king that Anne of Cleves surpassed her sister Sibylla in beauty as the golden sun surpasses the silver moon. Henry VIII was so enchanted by the portrait of the young bride that he refused her dowry. Anne was born in D. Seldorf in 1515. Her mother brought up her children in strictness, giving her daughters a purely German education, where the main aspects were to be a good and obedient wife. Because Anne did not speak foreign languages and did not play musical instruments, which on the contrary pleased the cheerful Henry VIII. Already being in England, Anne began to learn English and mastered the game of cards at the table. On the whole, Anne made an excellent impression on the king's advisors. Despite her courtesy, she was not overly familial and showed every sign of wanting to conform to English customs, to the point of inquiring about table manners. From the portrait of Anne of Cleves, we can tell that she had a slightly elongated nose, slightly sharp facial features, and thin lips. Her face was framed by russet hair and her breasts were large. However, Henry VIII apparently admired a small bust like Anne Boleyn's more. Anne of Cleves was a tall and thin woman. Her face was very determined. She held herself dignified before the King of England. But she was not ugly. Henry VIII was probably upset by his first date with his bride. When Anne of Cleves first arrived in England, an intrigued Henry was so eager to meet his new wife that he traveled unannounced to Rochester, where Anne rested for a few days. The king, dressed as a commoner, surprised Anne of Cleves by trying to kiss her without any idea who he was. Like a true well-meaning princess, Anne pushed the rascal away. This was not the reaction the king expected. Henry realized that without his royal title, not all women fall under his spell. At the wedding, Anna wore a gown of rye cloth made of gold fabric, decorated with large flowers of magnificent oriental pearls. However, the consummation of the marriage did not take place. Despite being polite and courteous to his young wife, Henry could no longer be charmed by her. To him, she was physically unattractive. After the marriage feast, the newlyweds went to bed. The next morning, Cromwell asked Henry how he had spent his wedding night. The king replied that he had not liked Anne before and now liked her even less. For weeks, the king continued his efforts to consummate the marriage and conceive an heir. He tried to overcome his aversion to his new wife, but the court physician advised Henry not to overstrain himself. The king went to bed with Anna, held her hand, kissed her, wished her good night, and fell asleep, and in the morning kissed her again before leaving. Soon, the king gave up. He decided to divorce her. The reason given was that, at a young age, Anne of Cleves was engaged to Francis, Duke of Angoulême, the future king Francis I of France. After the divorce, Anne received a generous allowance from the king in real estate, remaining in England as the king's favorite sister. Her relationship with Henry was very warm. However, she was upset by the choice of his sixth wife, Catherine Parr. Anne of Cleves found her less attractive than herself. Anne of Cleves lived a very happy life, never marrying again and having no children. She died in 1557 at the age of 42, 